Hi there folks, Rogue here, also known as Northern Bell Cosplay. Yesterday I posted asking if you guys had any questions, and so I've compiled a few of the questions and I will answer them here for you, via vlog format. Um, and I always find this kind of fun because, as people have mentioned before when they saw the trailer of the documentary that I'm in, which I'll address later, that it's interesting to hear my voice. And I'm not putting on any accents or anything, sometimes I like to don the southern, but yeah, this is what I sound like. So if you've only ever seen me in photo form, here's your auditory track. Alright, so the first question was, what was my most challenging photo shoot and why? I think this is a difficult question to answer because every photo shoot brings its own set of challenges. Um, to that end, my personally most challenging photo shoot was definitely one of the rogue shoots I did where, well, the reason why it was so challenging was the photographer seemed to have zero interest in really working with me. Now, I understand that when you pay a photographer for a shoot, it may not be their particular cup of tea. But you would like to think that if you are paying someone for a service, that they would at the very least have a base level knowledge of what you're getting into. Uh, the shoot I did was planned months in advance. I had talked to them about the character, Rogue, obviously. I had discussed different things I had purchased to create different kinds of shots or setups or things I was going to be bringing. And online it was always, yeah, sounds great. And then I arrived the day of the shoot. And not only did it not feel great, I was rushed in, I was rushed out. I didn't get the full time that I was supposed to for what I paid. And on top of that, they kind of mocked me in front of other clients and I felt that was really unprofessional and it was one of those just sort of an all-around upsetting experience and then it took forever to get the photos back and then when I did get them back they weren't even what we had originally discussed and so yeah it was pretty upsetting that way so I guess my piece of advice to you would be if you're going to book a shoot with someone do your research and don't just take I'm using this word lightly but celebrity -dom at face value, just because someone has a huge following on Facebook or social media doesn't mean they're very professional, and so just be wary of that. My second question, and this one hails all the way from Puerto Rico, is what has my favorite cosplay been so far? And a part two to that, how long did the chic body paint take? As far as my favorite cosplay, it's tough because again, I have different favorites for different reasons. I mean, I really love Jughead because it's comfy and casual and I get to stuff my face with cheeseburgers all day. But as far as characters I really identify with, Rogue, Rogue sorry, still is sort of the strongest one in that regard. But I am sort of most proud of my Khaleesi, my specifically my Dothraki Khaleesi cosplay, because of just the ensemble and how well it was put together and how well it suited me and the amount of people that mistook me for the actual Daenerys Targaryen or Amelia Clark. Um, so that was hugely flattering and I was very proud about that. As for the chic body paint, uh, it took about four and a half hours, give or take. I felt kind of bad for Jim or Artistic Curves, the painter, as you can see probably with me talking here, I move a lot. So um, kind of same happened there and I kind of moved a fair bit, so it was a little more strenuous on him than perhaps it should have been. But yeah, so about four and a half hours. Um, one question I got, I'm going to sort of tail on the end of this. Someone asked me what the best rogue I've ever done was. I find that a hard question to answer because I really don't like using the term best. Um, there's what I'm most proud of, but what I consider the best, I don't like using, again, I don't like using the word best in regards to cosplay. We all come at it for different reasons, and we all have different skill sets, and so the one I'm most proud of would definitely be my Jim Lee Rogue. Uh, my Legacy Rogue was commissioned from Castle Corsetry, which it was absolutely fantastic, but not having made it myself, there's a bit of bit of distance with that in that costume. Same with Messiah Complex. It's gorgeous and I love playing around with the cape, but it was made by Don't Panic Cosplay and so again I didn't have that full connection. Whereas the Jim Lee robe was a suit that I made personally and I actually made over and over again three or four different times until I sort of got the perfect version that I have now. Or at least what I consider perfect for me. Um, so yeah, that would be my best rogue. Again, not quite so fond of that term. Uh, the next question was, do I personally come across negativity while in cosplay and how do I handle it? Now, I do think it's an unfortunate truth that in every avenue of our world, we're going to experience negativity to some degree. Um, there, there's only so much you can do about that, but personally, I try, specifically with cosplay, I react in one of two ways. One, kill them with kindness. It never makes anyone feel so bad as when you are super sweet to them and sugary sweet and the whole you get more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. But two, sometimes that doesn't work or for whatever reason you can't, they've managed to really get under your skin. Then number two, avoid them. Walk away and be the bigger person. 
it's hard, it's sometimes impossible depending who they are. If it's a big conglomerate or an exhibitionist at the convention that's harassing you and you're having a difficult time, it might be more difficult to stay away from them. But it's one of those, you've just gotta, you've gotta surround yourself with positivity and with the people who are in it for the same reasons you are. And at the end of the day, the only thing you never get back is time, so don't waste time focusing on all those people who are going to be negative and it's just not worth it. Uh, my next question, what made me want to start cosplaying? This is a question I've gotten a lot and it's funny because cosplay was actually for me a happy accident. I grew up wanting to be center stage. <laughs> Anyone who knows me won't, won't disagree with that. Um, not only did I want to be center stage, initially I wanted to be a singer, but then I obviously, when I learned I was tone deaf, singing, not so much up my alley, and from that, that was like age eight or nine, it went from singing right over into acting, and I decided I was going to be an actor, and not only was I going to be an actor, I was going to be a Shakespearean a drama person, and it was very of that ilk, if you will, and so I went to a performing arts high school, and then after that, when I graduated, I went to the University of Toronto, and I specialized in theater and got a minor in English, and during my, spe like, during my courses specializing in theater, one of the avenues I strongly studied was costume design. Funnily enough, it wasn't until after I'd actually graduated the program and a couple years later that I actually discovered cosplay, and it was discovered because a friend of mine from New York, Jenna, had used the word, and confused, I googled it, and when I realized there was this whole other avenue of I didn't have to actually just wait for Halloween or to be cast in a show to put on a costume, when I realized I could literally do it all the time for really no rhyme or reason, I figured why wouldn't I want to do that? And so I've been doing that ever since. Um, next question, if, I, if and when I have to stop cosplaying, how do I want to go out, how do I want to be remembered in the cosplay world? I'm gonna put this out there, I'm never gonna stop cosplaying. I will come back from the grave as Casper, Moaning Myrtle, the Brown Lady, I will be the Marlies from the Muppets, I really don't care. I will find a way to come back and cosplay. In all seriousness, know that how do I want to be remembered in the cosplay world? For me, it's all about one thing. I want to be remembered as someone who inspired other people to follow their dreams. And even if that dream isn't cosplay related, that's totally cool. But don't give up on something you really want to do just because other people either don't think it's, don't think, or blah, 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 speaking really sometimes, don't hold back because other people don't see the value in it or because they don't agree with it or for whatever their rhyme or reason is, follow your heart. I know it's cheesy, I know it's cliche, but I stand by it, follow your heart. Next question. You can choose one costume from any work of fiction that would function and look exactly like its fictional counterpart, no matter how unrealistic. Example, the Iron Man suit with actual thrusters, Jarvis, etc. Also, let's say you, they let you bring it, it to the conventions. What would I choose? I really, I don't even have to think about this one. Khaleesi with three motherfucking dragons. Done. Enough said. Uh, next question was my cosplay role models. Again, this one's kind of a difficult one for me because uh, different rhymes and reasons for people. Um, off the top of my head, I've got four. Uh, for costuming, in regards to quality, turnaround, and abilities, um, both Jessica LG and Castle Corsetry, I, I love watching their work. I love seeing what they put out. I love seeing when they get hired for specific gigs and the sort of new and original work they do, as well as the cosplay and recreations. And so that's really fun. Um, Amanda Dawn cosplay for her character choices and her use of props. If you have not checked out this lady, please go do so. She has the most amazing dragon, Drogon, you will ever see. It's fixed to her shoulder. It's a nice puppet. It's, it's gorgeous and it's mind blowing and I want to build one. And so yeah, definitely go check her out. As far as personalities are concerned, I really adore Margie Cox. Um, again, if you haven't checked her out, go do so. She does Wonder Woman and a lot of other characters, but she also is very big in the charity scene, and she does a lot of her cosplays specifically for charity events, and I really respect that about her. Um, and last, for sort of style, I would say Chelfie cosplay. For a while she was known, I believe, as CAJ cosplay, but now it's Chelfie. Um, and I love her stylistically just because the characters she chooses, and not just the characters, but how she chooses to don them. Um, she tends to favor witches, and I adore the witches as well too, specifically Alphaba, and sort of watching her you know, explore that area. She does a little Witchy Wednesday, which is fun to follow. And she's also done my favorite Southern Belle, so, you know, I'm always happy when I see that happening. Um, so yeah, I guess for role models, those are sort of four I actively follow. There are also websites such as Geek Girls, which are good to follow because you see new work coming around all the time, and so it's a great chance to sort of find either new cosplayers or makeup artists or photographers, etc. to follow. And so yeah, it's really good for that. 
Uh, next question. Do you know about this movie called Rogue in Real Life? I heard it's screening soon. Bit of a little selfish plug here. So, yes, there is a documentary short known as Rogue in Real Life. It's 15 minutes long, and it will be premiering this Thursday um, at York University. I'm pretty excited about it. It is based on me, so I do feel a little bit arrogant plugging it, but I do think it's also a good documentary, if I'm allowed to say that as the subject. I'm not really sure. Um, it was a blast working with Kevin and Jill and Benjamin and everyone else who had a hand in the project. Uh, we started filming actually in 2013 and they followed me around Fan Expo 2013 and various conventions and all sorts of footage and there were tons of interviews and stuff and it's kind of amazing to see how hours upon hours can be whittled down into 15 minutes but it's beautiful I love it it's going to be great you should see it if you can't see it as in you're not in the Toronto area obviously um, it will eventually be either available online or on DVD uh, the director and I are working that out now so I will let you know as soon as there's more information about that but if you are in the GTA area uh, drop me a line if you want to stop by and come watch the movie with me I'll be there at the premiere this Thursday so yeah let me know and the last question was, other than making cosplays and attending cons, what do you do for your cosplay life? Like the kind of things you do for online, for promotion, and stuff like that. So, as you obviously know, I attend conventions for cosplay. Um, I also do a lot of photo shoots that are either just of my personal desire, because I want to find a way to save and capture this memory of this costume or this outfit. Um, I've also done articles. I like to write a lot. I write for Geek Girls specifically, um, so you can go onto Geek Girls and find my stuff there. And I've written on a myriad of topics from everything from cosplay bullying to my own personal experiences with cosplay, top 10 lists, you name it. If you ever have a request for an article, feel free to submit. I mean, my ability to write it will depend whether or not I'm able to write on the topic, but feel free to submit it. Um, other than writing articles and photo shoots, I also like to host events when possible. So. As opposed to just going to conventions and setting up tables, which is grand, and to everyone who does it, that's fantastic. Um, I also wanted to find a way to set up costumed events that weren't conventions. Conventions are great. They're a great way, place to exhibit your art and to meet new people and for a marketplace. But as far as sort of just hanging out and having fun, they've gotten to be really expensive. And it's just one of those, at the end of the day, I'm a student, I'm sure many of you are students, and the $50 ticket on top of the 200 or more that I might be spending on any given cosplay, plus the, the costs, they just kind of add up and they just kind of become ridiculous. And so it was one of those, but I want more opportunities to share my cosplays and, you know, meet people and so we decided we being myself and my colleague Northern Panic or sorry we are Northern Panic she is Don't Panic Cosplay I am Northern Belle um, and you've probably seen her a lot on my Facebook but she and I we try and set up events that are family friendly and costume based so for one example is we teamed up with Cosplay for a Cure for Cause Skate for a Cure this past February so we all went down to Harborfront Center in costume and donations were given to the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation um, coming up on May 4th, we have Cosplay City Cleanup Competition, which is taking place in both London and Toronto simultaneously. Basically, we are we each have a park selected, selected Harris Park and Allen Gardens, respectively. And basically, over the course of three or four hours, at the end of it, we're all going to pile up all the garbage we've managed to collect and clean out of the park. And whoever's garbage pile is bigger will win. Um, and now the park is beautiful for photo shoots. And it's just a great chance to sort of give back. And today is Earth Day. So if you haven't been able to sort of celebrate and help out with Earth Day, maybe you should consider coming by to the cleanup. Okay, sorry, self-plug over. Other than that, uh, we also have a Father's Day weekend picnic coming up, which we also might have a scavenger hunt for, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but yeah, sort of setting up costumed events outside the city, or it's also one of those, just as geeky as this sounds, hanging out with my friends in cosplay, because playing make-believe is still fun. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all I do. I'm usually really busy with school during the school year. I'm, as I may have mentioned on my page before, I'm studying to become a sign language interpreter, so ASL to English interpreter. And so that sort of does take up a lot of my time. So I've had to sort of scale back the amount that I'm doing with the cosplay world. But that's me in a nutshell. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, it was great talking to you guys. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. And yeah, I'll see you at the next event. Thank you.